Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming out to our SolarWinds MSP Hero Series webinar this month. Today, I'm really excited to have uh, Steve Ruktovitz from Troy Sec Cybersecurity to talk about how you can use uh, security services to drive project and reoccurring revenue. My name is Kelly O'Bright. I'm a global community manager at SolarWinds MSP. I have been with SolarWinds MSP from the Hound Dog days for those that have been in the industry a very long time. Uh, I've got over 20 years experience in the channel and uh, I currently sit as the vice chair of the CONTIA MSP community, which is really uh, an organization that tries to educate partners about the industry. So both in my, my role with SolarWinds MSP and with my volunteer position, uh, I spend most of my time trying to find ways to help MSP become better at what they do. So the Hero Series is something that we've started. It's a 2017 initiative for SolarWinds. And so it's something that's going to help you understand what's happening in the industry. And it's around quarterly themes. So this quarter's theme is security. So it's something that is very important to your customers. It's certainly something you're hearing from your clients and um, they're asking you lots of questions about that. And so we thought it was appropriate to do a whole quarterly series on that. So the Hero Series is the last Tuesday of every month and there's going to be uh, one throughout the entire year. So put it in your calendar. It's open to all solution providers so you don't have to be a SolarWinds MSP client. Uh, you don't even have to be an MSP. It's, uh, it's something that we're just going to put out there to try to educate the channel on what's happening in our industry. So the next one after today is going to be May 23rd at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And it's going to be a panel of MSPs. And we're going to take them through question and answers about how they're using security in their MSP practice and, and how it uh, is affecting how they go to market and uh, how they're growing their MSPs. And then in June on the 27th, also at 11 o'clock, we're going to talk about how you can use layered security to protect your clients. And we've got Eric Anthony, uh, one of SolarWinds MSP senior sales engineers, going to do that one. And so those are all, both going to be great webinars and I think you know, something that you're going to want to put in your calendar and join us again. So with, with that, I'm going to pass this over to Steve to talk to you about uh, what he's doing in, this, in the security realm. Steve, take it away. Great. Thank you very much, Kelly. First off, I want to thank SolarWinds today for having us present this seminar. Again, my name is Steve Rutkiewicz. I'm President and CEO of Choice Cybersecurity. I've owned and operated a very successful MSP business for over 20 years. I started with a one-person business, built it up, up to over 40 people with about 300 clients. Um, and I clearly, clearly understand the MSP space. I've been a student of the MSP kind of business, and I really understand your specific challenges. So today, as the owner of Choice Cybersecurity, I'm very excited to be with you and spend an hour together to learn more about the current security and compliance landscape. So first I want to give you kind of a history of Choice Technologies. I started the company in 1995 and we started as a VAR, kind of doing break fix and building networks and then stepping back and waiting for people to call when things broke or had problems and doing support. Then in the early 2000s, we started understanding about managed services and then started doing proactive services around managed services and became from reactive to proactive. As time went on, we had a lot of medical and financial clients and our medical and financial clients were asking more and more things about HIPAA, about FFIEC for banks, GLBA, finance, SCC, and they were giving us things like breaches, attacks, forms to fill out, cyber insurance. And what I realized was everybody was just kind of winging it and we were winging it too. And we wanted to build a structure around security the same way we built a structure repeatable process around managed services. So we actually built it out with a lot of success. In 2016, our competitors came to us and wanted to do an acquisition. We actually sold the managed services business to them so we could focus 100% as a pure play on security and compliance. So that's kind of the evolution um, from 1995 to today. So let's talk about the MSP space and where it is today. 
So, you know, everything's moving to the cloud and it's moving at a very, very fast pace. Things are in a hybrid mode. So for the next, you know, hybrid mode is going to stay here for the next, you know, two, three years. We'll be in this kind of a hybrid mode moving forward. And things have kind of got commoditized. You know, a few years back, we were commoditized kind of in hardware. Hardware starting to get commoditized. So we kind of focused on services. But as our MSP business kind of matures, we're seeing that commoditization is also around services, right? So what are we going to do to move forward to actually grow our businesses? So every CEO out there kind of has a, their favorite books. And one of my favorite books is The Blue Ocean Strategy. And it's been out for a number of years. It just had a re-release. But I really like this book. If you've read it, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't read it, I kind of recommend that you should pick this book up and take a look at it. Because, you know, in, in one picture, it shows a really good metaphor of where the MSP business is today. So again, it's the red oceans on the left. Red ocean is commoditized. It's thin margins. It's hard to get new business. It's raked over um, to some degree. It's, it's getting tougher and tougher to you know, provide new services. It's red, it's bloody, and it's shark infested waters. On the right, you have the blue oceans. The blue oceans are a world of opportunity. And in a world of opportunity of uncontested markets, kind of very little competition, very high margins. And I think that's where we want to focus and shift a lot of our services going forward. So we want to kind of really focus on the blue ocean. But the question is, where is that blue ocean in our world? So I believe the blue ocean is in security and compliance. Security and compliance is growing at 12 to 15% a year annually. The cost of cybercrime is, you know, reaching $6 trillion annually. Compliance business is to reach $38 billion by 2001, and I think it's going to be higher based on the number of compliances I see, you know, coming out all the time. Compliance-driven security purchases are up 25 to 30%, and the most staggering number of all is that cybersecurity is to reach $1 trillion by 2021. In 2015, it was a $400 billion market. It's moving to $1 trillion, which is almost triple. So you know, let's stay on the slide for a second because these are real numbers, and it's not just coming from one source. It's coming from multiple sources. So this is really a huge emerging business, and the question is, how are you as MSPs going to get a piece of this business? Because it's there. We just got to figure out how to get a piece of it. So the average cost of a security breach for a small to medium-sized business is $4 million. Is $4 million. And this is based on the Poneman Institute's numbers. And the Poneman Institute's a very good resource for looking at security in the small to medium-sized space. But these are a combination of costs from damages, destruction of data, IP theft, stolen money, loss of productivity, fraud and embezzlement, forensics investigations, deletion of hacked data, and reputation harm. So it's a cascading effect. When a company has a breach, it's really cascading. So where's the opportunity for the, for the MSP? We just looked at some outrageous, really outrageous numbers, and where's the opportunity for the MSP today? So the huge, there's a huge gap in the marketplace for security and compliance services, and your opportunity is providing those gaps. Growing security breaches, it's happening every day, you hear it in the news. There's increases in compliance and regulations, and in 2017, there's several new regulations with, with actual due dates that have to be done, and we're seeing more and more emerge over the next couple of years. Increased drivers for security around cybersecurity, filling out forms and making sure customers can get insurance. Customers are asking other customers to actually have um, security in place just to do business with them. So we're moving from protection to detection. We're moving more into the proactive world, learning behavior. And we're not going to be looking in the rear view mirror as much. We're going to be looking out into the future and helping customers to protect. So the real opportunity here is we're instead of winging it, we want to build a structured solution. And that's really the big opportunity uh, for you as an MSP going forward. 
So how are we going to capture this business? And the question is, it is the looking at the geometry of a sale. When you look at a geometry of a sale, you really have three points, right? It's a triangle. You can grow revenue, you can reduce cost, or you can improve efficiency. These are the three reasons customers buy your services or any other services. But when you're looking at security and compliance, you're talking about risk. And the question is, where does risk fall on a balance sheet? You know, we have a lot of business owners out there. Do you see the, the risk line item on any of their balance sheets? And the answer is really no. So we have to learn how to have conversations and new conversations with our clients to discuss risk and how risk is impacting or can impact their business. So the first thing we look at is when you look at risk, risk is an unknown cost. It can be huge. Just like the slide before, it could be a $4 million liability or even higher. So we want to be able to quantify what the actual risk and get a number around it and make it more certainty around it and then try to minimize it so we can talk about customers. It's a way to reduce costs. Again, if you have a hack or a breach, that will impact your ability to grow your revenue because you'll probably have some kind of brand um, damage so it's going to be hard to grow your business. And, and number three is if your system's down for a week and shut down because you can't operate, it's definitely going to impact efficiency. So we need to have new conversations with our clients around security and compliance to help you grow your managed services business. And remember, not only do we have to have new conversations around risk, we have to help our clients put budgets in place for security and compliance services. The large companies out there, you know, they all have budgets for security and compliance. We need to help our clients, you know, put a line item in for security and compliance services going forward. So what are the sources of the opportunity for security and compliance? There's really two, right? You can work with your existing clients with upsell opportunities, huge opportunity there to add new layers of security and compliance for existing customers or new clients. Now I hear from MSPs around the world and they're telling me it's harder and harder to get new clients. The reason is the MSP business is kind of mature and the customer is having a hard time deciding the differences between one MSP and another MSP. Your MSP is probably better than the other MSPs, and it's true. The customer's having a hard time seeing it. So what we found is by using security and compliance, you don't just have a, a differentiator. You need a substantial differentiator. You need to go to these clients with the new Blue Ocean kind of services and get them talking security and compliance and then work backward into the managed services. We're having a lot of success with that technique. So the big opportunity around security is moving your clients from security 1.0 to security 2.0. So when you look at security, you, you cannot solve security with a pinpoint solution. It just doesn't happen, right? So, you, so there's no one single product from any single vendor that's going to solve security. Security and compliance are built in layers. As MSPs, what are we good at? We're good at putting lots of products together and, and building a suite of products together to solve a solution. That's why security and compliance is such a good fit for you, the MSP, to build a, a suite of products and layers to help your clients um, add layers of security to, again, reduce their risk. Most MSPs are providing services today to their clients, not all, but some, and the majority still in what I call security 1.0. It's a, a good firewall, antivirus patch management, maybe you know offering open DNS or something, but it's still security 1.0. There are a lot of opportunities for, for adding layers and more layers that we're going to help show you today, but that's really where the big opportunity is. So I want to show you the difference between security and compliance. And, you know, security and compliance are different and probably the best analogy I've ever seen is a motorcycle. So you're probably going to say to me, how's a motorcycle like security and compliance? Well, in the, we live in Maryland, right? So I live in Maryland right outside of Baltimore. And we have what's called a state law around helmets, right? So if you're riding a motorcycle, we, you have to have a helmet on. Now, you don't have to have a shirt. You don't have to have but shorts on and no you know, long pants. And you don't even have to have shoes on. But as long as you're wearing a helmet, you are compliant, right? So you're obeying the order and the rule requested. 
But I can tell you, if you're riding this motorcycle down the road about 60 miles an hour and you spill out, you're going to wish you had this padded jacket on, a pair of Kevlar pants, and some really good um, protective boots. So the security is an extra layer of security that does cost money, and you're going to tell your customers it's going to cost money, but it's going to protect you at a higher level. So again, we have to understand the difference between security and compliance. So let's break down compliance because compliances are the best drivers and triggers. A lot of these compliance have actually dates and times that they, a client must meet these compliances. And I think as MSPs, this is a, a very good opportunity for you to start adding this service. There's four types of compliances. The first is called state laws. 48 of the 50 states in the United States have state PII laws personal identifiable information, laws around uh, information of, of individuals like credit cards, social security numbers. There's about 17 different categories that make up PII. And as a matter of fact, in some states, an email address is PII. So think about that for a second, how many email addresses people have. The second um, is federal laws. So federal laws are like HIPAA. HIPAA is a federal compliance by the Office of Civil Rights and it's a federal mandate. In Canada, it's FIPA, right? But in the U.S., it's HIPAA, and it's a federal compliance. You also have international compliances like PCI. PCI was built by the credit card industry. You probably hear it all the time, but that's an international compliance, very few international compliances. And then you have your best practices. They're not necessarily compliances. They're voluntary best practices that if you put them in place, they're kind of recommended. ISO 207001 is a good example of a best practices framework. So if we drill, if we drill down, um, we drill down a little further on compliances. You know, I've heard there's just basically 800 compliances in the world or so. That's a lot of compliances. But on a normal, regular basis, we see about a dozen compliances that are very common over and over again. And your customers, um, if you know how to ask the questions and dig into the questions, you're going to find that most of your clients and, the, and a growing number of your clients do have security and compliance and compliance regulations they have to meet. So when you look around the circle here, you know, HIPAA is very big. HIPAA is, um, you know, the covered entities have to have HIPAA compliance as well as business associates. The common theme that we found in every single compliance and this is a big deal. Every single compliance is recommending or saying that you have to have a risk assessment. The risk assessment is a common thread. The other common thread that we're seeing here is you also have to have what's called a self-assessment. The self-assessment means that you as an MSP can make this recommendation to a client as to what assessment they need to have in place. There's very few assessments that actually need a certifying body. So like PCI, there's four levels of PCI. The small to medium-sized client makes up about 98% of everything we've ever seen. So you as an MSP could put in the, the uh, self SAQ, the self-assessment questionnaire, and provide these services. The only other um, certified compliance here is on the ISO. There is a few people in the world that can certify an ISO, but I can tell you for every 20 ISO frameworks you put in place, one needs to be certified. And usually it's some giant company, like a top 10 Fortune 1000, Fortune like 100 company that's requiring their subcontractors to have it. So again, the opportunity here is you could be providing these services. If you even look at HIPAA and how big that is, you know, that's a federal compliance, but there's no certifying body for HIPAA. The Office of Civil Rights is overseeing it. So if there's a breach, you're gonna come in and do fines. But again, you don't have to be certified to certify your clients for HIPAA. So why are companies mandated to have compliances? The reason is we're seeing a trend that if a client has a NIST or if they have an ISO, that they are much more secure, have less breaches, have less problems, and just across the board are safer. Right, so that's for regulated businesses. So if it's good enough for a regulated business, why aren't we recommending a best practices control framework for every one of our clients? So part of our process is making a recommendation
for a framework to not just the, the regulated businesses, but also other businesses. So I'll give you an example. So let's take a look at law firms. Law firms, when you approach them, they don't have a federal compliance in most cases. There's really no federal compliance. But they're bound by their client's compliances, right? So we ask the questions of what kind of law work do you do? They'll say, well, I do you know, medical malpractice or I do uh, work for a bank. Well, they're bound by their client's compliances. And the conversation there is the law firm should be more secure than their most secure client. So again, we would recommend some kind of framework, maybe in this, right, maybe an ISO. So we can recommend a framework. And usually that, that firm or that company is going to listen to your recommendation because you're going to show them how, how it's going to really tighten up and put them on a structure. So once you understand security and you understand compliance, and again, you don't have to know the ins and outs, you just have to know kind of the talking points. Then we want to look at the vertical markets. So again, as an MSP for 20 years, you know, we worked a lot by referrals and we really didn't know what was coming in next. So we had a lot of pockets of clients in the medical and financial, but again, it wasn't unlikely that we can get a referral by accounting firm or some retail company or um, you know, one of our accounting clients will recommend their manufacturing company. So as MSPs around the world, we normally see that you have kind of uh, lots of different customers. So you have to learn how to approach each type of vertical and what the talking points are and the hot buttons for those verticals are based on security and compliance. So I'll give you an example. You're looking here and saying construction. Well, how does construction have a conversation around security and compliance? Well, we're working with a couple contractors that have government contracts. So if you actually have a government contract and it's a DOD or Department of Defense, you have to have a NIST 171 framework in place by December 2017. So if you can talk to your customers, the contractor, and find out they have government contracts, they may have to have a NIST in place. Or they might have 500 employees in multiple states, and we're concerned about that PII information on the state, state level. And we want to protect the social security numbers, credit cards, et cetera. They have a fiduciary responsibility to protect that data. So we're starting to build a case of compliance, best practices, uh, things and reasons why they need to move forward. So we help you learn how to approach these different verticals. We're up to about 25 different verticals now, including pharmaceutical and title companies and mortgage companies. But more and more companies are having compliances mandated by their industry. Huge opportunity. So the next step is you need a repeatable process. The same way you have managed services, you need a repeatable process. And this here is our secret sauce. We have developed a repeatable process that you can add to your managed service business called assess, address, and maintain. The first step is the risk assessment. We've got to go in and we've got to understand the risk that companies have in order to be able to show a customer overwhelming evidence that they have to move forward. So the risk assessment is step one, and that's really the discovery phase. Once we do the discovery phase, we come back and do the address. The address is bringing the client up to an acceptable level of risk so we can minimize the risk and mitigate the risks going forward and help them meet compliance. The third step is maintain the monthly recurring revenue to add to your managed service to maintain an acceptable level of risk. So this is really the the process here, it's assess, address, and maintain, and it's a super structured format. So let's drill down and take a look at it. So the first step is the risk assessment. The better you are at risk assessments and getting the customer just to focus on a risk assessment is really the magic bullet to the whole process. Because sometimes if you're going in and talking to a customer about security compliance, it's overwhelming. They don't really see the benefits and they say, well, I don't really need to spend money there. But if you can get a customer to really focus on the first step as a risk assessment, I guarantee they'll find a budget for it, they'll do it, and then if you can show the overwhelming evidence going forward, the address and maintain fall right in place. So the, the assessment, we have really good scanning tools. And it's taken us about four years to really perfect this scanning process. And again, it keeps changing, so we're getting better at it. The first step is the passive scans. In the passive scans, we're looking at kind of the active directory. We're looking at password strength. We're looking at orphan servers, orphan workstations, old users, 
things that could get us in trouble if we don't clean things up. So the passive scans kind of give us a snapshot in time and a really good um, understanding of the inventory of all the different pieces that are tied into the network infrastructure. The second type of scan is called an active scan. The active scan is really powerful because the internal and external scans, it looks at how a hacker kind of looks at everything in real time. So it doesn't give us all this information about what needs to be patched and, and, and kind of a snapshot of time. It really just zeroes in on the vulnerabilities. So it gives us a list of vulnerabilities, and if we solve those vulnerabilities, what percent or how, how we improve our, our risk posture. So the active scans are also very important. And the third type of scans we do are PII scans. That is the personal identifiable information scans. And boy, that's really huge because you can pull out the credit cards, you can pull out the social security numbers, the date of birth. And guess what? On all those compliances, the fines are all related to records. So they're not related to having put 443 open right from the, the active scan. It's related to the number of records that get stolen. So if we know what the records are inside of a system, we can see what our potential collateral damage could be. The next scan that we do is something called a stale data scan because as people move to the cloud, it's going to become more and more about the data. And I can tell you, I never knew what was inside of our clients' data, nor did I really care. Now we care. Now your clients care. So, you know, we can look at data and see what hasn't been touched in over two years by like file type. And we can start either deleting or archiving, encrypting the data. And again, we want to reduce the attack surface of a client if we can do that, right? Nobody's looking at the data, huge opportunity here. So the first step of a risk assessment is the scans. The second component is the control framework, which is either installing a compliance or best practices framework to put in place. The way we do that is we have a, a branded portal that you can actually click on HIPAA, and just like a TurboTax, it starts asking you questions, you start filling them out. If it's a NIST, 800 or NIST 171 or ISO 207001, you just click on that framework, start asking the questions. And like a TurboTax, you just fill out the questions, do the updates, and at the end, you get what's called an ROC. The ROC is a report on compliance, and it shows you the gaps. So it shows you just on the things you need to work on, and then we can prioritize the, you know, it could be 137 questions for ISO, but we're already doing a lot of those things. And it'll just let us focus on the gaps or those things that the 20 things we haven't done, we can prioritize, put a plan in place to knock them out, and then keep working toward that um, compliance framework. So let's take a look at some of the scanning tools that we use. And one of the best tools we use is by SolarWinds, and it is the risk intelligence platform. And what it allows us to do is go into the data and actually scan for credit cards, um, social security numbers, date of births, banking information, um, social security numbers. These are the things that are all breachable and, cal and calculate breaches. So we want to know what we have so now we can start seeing what our risk is. So in this case, it's showing in a graphical mode how many of each of these files that they have. And this is the one server. So they're seeing a $1.3 million potential collateral breach here if that server was to be hacked or some outside hacker got to see what's in here. I did a system uh, scan for a not-for-profit a couple weeks ago, and we found a $52 million um, potential breach on their servers and data over the last 20 years. And you know, we presented to the client that was really an eye-opener. So the goal here is for us to be able to show a client in business terms overwhelming evidence that they got to move forward and, um, you know, and, and, and and better protect their security posture. So another scan that we just started doing, it's really kind of eye-opening. These are the dark web scans. And the dark web scans, you know, you're looking at a security risk of a business. We're not just looking at the internal, the external. We're looking at, you know, are, is our data stolen? Is it out there in the dark web? We have some really good search tools right now. So if you're looking here, we can buy domain, we can enter a domain, and then see if anybody's credentials are actually stolen. And this is really a cool tool because here you can see a pattern that their passwords aren't strong enough, so there's opportunities to tighten it up. 
We're also seeing companies that use their business emails and also their passwords for social media and social media gets hacked and it's a kind of a, um, a way to get into the company. So doing these dark web searches are become more and more valuable. If you look at the, in the middle here, you see the keylogger and phishing. We actually had situations where we saw a breach around keylogging and phishing. And I go back to the cusp to MSP and say, hey, can you take a look at Diane's machine? And they go and do a scan and there's some keylogger sitting there. So, and it could have been sitting there for months. So the key here is really getting good intelligence and looking very clearly into the visibility of the system. And today we have the tools to kind of see it like a high definition MRI. So once we see the clarity inside these systems, it really does help to, to go to the next step with the address and maintain. So this tool is really cool. It's red hot right now. I'll tell you what, if you send me a domain name of a customer or potential client you're talking to, uh, an email to me at info at choicecybersecurity.com, I'll do a search for you and send you back a spreadsheet and tell you if there's you know, any of their credentials are stolen on the web. It's great information, especially for new, talking to new customers because they might have a managed service provider in place. You come in and show them all their data stolen and it definitely, you know, rocks and shakes the confidence of their existing IT company. So again, we're going to have better conversations with our clients around, you know, around risk and minimizing the risk. So, So once we do the, the assessment and do a really good job on the assessment, the next step is we take all the data that we collected from the ROC, right, the report on compliance, and also all the scans, and we want to play it back to our client and summary information and very simply play it back, not with a lot of bits and bytes. We want to sit, you know, we call it a board report where it's very business oriented. We want to provide an executive summary. In that executive summary, you want to show them the gaps the risks and the recommendations going forward. And that is a very um, simple two, three page report. The recommendations have projects that are broken down and we usually help the client prioritize those projects. We're building it in layers of security and we're creating multiple projects. Okay, so let's take a look at the different types of um, layers of security that you can offer your clients. Now, if you look around this wheel, we've identified around 20-some layers you can implement. You know, we talk to managed service providers right now. They could be implementing, you know, a couple of these, but they're usually not implementing, you know, 20-some layers. The difference in, in the address that's different than managed services is, in managed services, you want to put the same tools in over and over again and, you know, re rinse, or lather, repeat and do them over and over again. In security and compliance, we're only going to put the layers in that are important for our client to bring them up to an acceptable level of risk. We don't want to put too many layers in. We don't want to overlayer or underlayer. So it's kind of an art that we teach you how to put these layers in place. But if you just look around the horn here, after every single risk assessment, there's some type of remediation and cleanup. We're seeing so much old data and sensitive data, it's kind of peppered everywhere because nobody's been watching and looking at this. It's really unruly and it's, you know, it, it's a potential high breach factor. So lots of cleanup work, lots of billable hours. The SIM technology, which is auditing and logging, all the compliances and best practices say you have to have some kind of audit and log, logs in place. You have to review those logs periodically. I think the SIM market is big in the big companies, but we'll probably have a one or 2% penetration in the MSP space, and there's just a huge opportunity there. It's finally evolved, and it's really ripe for MSPs to start rolling out auditing and logging. We have some great solutions we vetted out there. Encryption's a huge conversation. I'll tell you why. Encryption gets into email encryption, disk encryption, file encryption, mobile device encryption. Why is encryption so important? Because in these compliances and breaches, Encryption often is what's called a safe harbor. And what a safe harbor is that if data is encrypted, it's not findable. So if you just look at HIPAA, for most of these state laws, they offer what's called a safe harbor, which means that if, let's say, a doctor or an accountant leaves um, their laptop in the back of an Uber, right, then what happens is they could have thousands of records that are un unsecure that, 
and then it gets you know out on the street and they could be fined whatever five hundred dollars per record or a million and a half dollars if the data is encrypted guess what it's not a findable breach so we're going to have these conversations with our clients and we're going to show them why they should have their data encrypted because if something does happen it's not a findable breach and again these cyber insurance policies that people are buying there is no protection against a breach. You, you know, if you have a breach for negligence or information gets out, there's no insurance or no coverage. So we really want to protect our clients more around a breach than anything else, because that's the one thing that could really, you know, have a negative impact on a company. So again, looking at mobile device management, there's going to be 9 billion mobile device devices by 2021. You know, there's all these new opportunities around mobile device management and protecting that. We have new services around file archiving. There's opportunities around data leak protection, catching things that might go out before they go out or alerting if sensitive data is leaving the office. So again, these are just a few of the layers that we're actually providing. But again, we're vetting products all the time, adding them into our suite that you can start offering to your customers and layers. Okay, so once you do the assess, the risk, then we do the address, we bring our clients up and accept the level of risk. Now is the third part, that's the maintain. And it's every MSP's favorite part. That is the monthly recurring revenue layers that you can implement on top of your current managed services agreements. And there's lots of opportunities here. And we spent a lot of time developing and working in this area because the better your recurring revenue, the more proactive you are, the more value you're creating for your business and the safer you're making your client. It really does align your, your, with the MSP business with the customer's business. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of recurring revenue services we developed in the security and compliance space that you may or may not have even heard of before. Uh, and these are the seven. We have about 15 that you can roll out, but here are seven. The first one's dark web. So once you do your dark web search, we have a service real time that can monitor your client's um, credentials that as soon as something's breached, we can see it right away. Often be able to work backward and see if something, a keylogger or if something suspicious is actually on somebody's uh, network. Very, very hot opportunity right now once to explain the dark web search. Vulnerability as a service. Vulnerability as a service, every single compliance or best practice out there talks about ongoing vulnerability services. So we put together um, a suite of secure vulnerability services, and I'm gonna tell you why this is so important, because once you have your baseline of what your risk is after that risk assessment from the initial scans, you wanna be able to provide ongoing scans to show the client how you're improving things over time and how their risks are going down. So in the security and compliance space, we have a very good tools where we can show clients what we're doing and how we're improving the posture. One of the big challenges we always had in managed services were, you know, the, the client had problems, we come in, provide managed services, the problems went away, then the customer wants a discount. Like, they didn't realize the value of what they're paying for over time. And we're always having these conversations trying to save our managed service, you know, the value and keep our prices what they were. In security, we have, we can actually show them how the security posture is improving and trend lines over time. So we can show you how to do that, but that goes a long way in showing customers what we're doing. Compliance to service is really a growing industry because the compliances keep changing. If you look at PCI alone, we went from 3.0 to 3.1 to 3.2 just, you know, recently. And again, every time they change the compliance, they're adding new features and ratcheting it up with the compliance requirements. So you, you want to keep on top of this for your clients. And again, it's a combination of technology, um, awareness training, and policies together that are really going to put the right compliance posture in place for your client. The new file ar archiving solution, this one's really taken off because instead of spending hundreds of hours remediating, we can put a file archiving solution in place do a scan, get a baseline, and again, talk to the client, all the files are over three years old, it'll automatically set up a policy to archive them and encrypt them. And in two hours, you basically cleaned up your network and reduced the, the, um, the, the, um, the tax service by about 80%, right? So this is, these are really cool technologies. This, 
This technology wasn't even for security and compliance. I actually kept hearing customers' needs and then found the best secure file archiving system and then moved it into the security space. So some of these things we're finding start off somewhere else, like for you know managing backups or whatever, and we're moving them into security. One of the biggest opportunities out there is password management. Once we do a risk assessment and find out the passwords aren't safe, you know, they're not using, you know, eight characters, you know, you want to follow the NIST policy. People are, re you know, repeating the same passwords every other time. They're not changing passwords. They're never set to expire. So passwords are a pretty big conversation, and there's lots of services and tools that you can wrap around this, including what's good for the end user. So we got to make sure the end user is a good experience and we don't ratchet up the security where the people can't work. So for example, we just did a um, risk assessment for a company of 400 users worldwide and now to meet the NIST, they have a government contracts to meet the NIST, they have to have the NIST 171 in place by December. So we got to ratchet up the passwords and change the passwords every 60 days and build a policy around that. So now we're implementing self-service change for the users and building a whole service around that so that users can change the passwords you know on their own so we're making it more difficult but we're giving them a good user experience uh, as well and then risk assessments remember the risk assessment that you do in the beginning is going to be key because that's going to give you the initial baseline but again every compliance asks for a risk assessment on at least a yearly basis sometimes more frequently but at least on an annual basis. So the reason this is such a great opportunity for you is because you're the trusted advisor and you already have the trust of the client and by you walking in with a security compliance offering, you know, you're going to go, you're going to have a, an edge up being able to offer these services. You do not want an outside vendor coming in and doing a risk assessment because what happens is just like an attorney, if you give an attorney a document and ask them if it looks okay, they're going to make a few changes. Right? So the same thing with you, a person comes in does an outside risk assessment, they're going to find something. And then it could factor into your relationship with your customer where it could shake the confidence. Right? So you want to be proactive and provide that risk assessment for these businesses. Now, when we work with MSPs, we work with lots of different MSPs. Some MSP, MSPs are still at Security 1.0. They want to get in security compliance. We help them do that. Right, we can help you do that. So that's one. Two, we have some MSPs that have some really robust security solutions, but they've really been outsourcing or haven't gotten the compliance. We can help you add security to, I'm sorry, compliance to your, your robust MSP and security offering. And we also work with MSPs that have a good security and compliance offering in place that may be HIPAA specific. Now we can broaden that spectrum out to like 15 different verticals or, or compliances. So again, no matter where you're at in the spectrum, we can help you elevate your program. So the question is, how do you do this? So now we have a process to follow, we have a structure to follow, and you know you need a one-stop shop where all this information's at, all the training and resources and knowledge is all in one spot. So what we've done is we developed a self service membership portal that provides security and compliance to you totally turnkey. It, it provides everything you need to start rolling out security and compliance to your customers. And if you follow our process, I guarantee and within 90 days you're writing business. And in six months, you'll be leading with security and compliance. It takes some time to learn. It takes some time to build confidence. But within six months or so, you can be leading with security compliance and so confident, and it's going to really be a game changer for your managed services to help you grow into that blue ocean. So let me tell you what the portal includes. It includes monthly live training. We've actually um, brought in some world experts in the area of managed service security sales and also security training. It keeps tra it keeps changing and evolving. So we have monthly live webinars that are also recorded and on demand. So I know a lot of MSPs are busy. So all this information is on demand. We want this to be not only for you, the MSP owner or operator, we want your whole company to learn how to use all these services. We have a complete LMS learning and training um, program inside with constantly new 
learning and training information and, and programs coming out on a monthly basis. We also provide coaching. So a lot of times we have to help you build a strategy how to build security compliance onto your business. Sometimes these compliance is a little bit kind of regional. So for instance, in Virginia, we have a MSP, a lot of government contractors around them. So we're focusing on the low hanging fruit there around government contractors. If I was in New York, right, they have the new DFS rule of state PII that all financial companies have to have a NIST framework in place by uh, September 1 of 2017. So if I was in New York, in the state of New York, I would be focusing on those DFS companies. And again, they're all online. You can see who they are. You can even look in your current customer, match against the database and the web, and then target them and have them do a NIST compliance. I have a, um, an MSP in Canada that has a lot of you know, energy companies that they're working with. So that NERC, the NERC compliance, is going to be the framework for them we're going to be focusing on. So again, we help you with the strategy. Once you understand the business strategy, then we can help you strategize each individual appointment that you have with either existing customers or new clients to help you uh, with that new conversation you're going to have around security and compliance. So again, we have a completely branded compliance portal for you. So based on the type of compliance, you and your, your clients can see the um, and help build the frameworks for them. It's all built and ready to roll. We have all the branded marketing materials. We spent a lot of time building marketing materials because originally we did this in a way of a boot camp and people love the training. They'd say, okay, what's next? I said, well, you got to send emails. You have to have branded brochures. You need templates for risk assessments. You need templates for executive summaries. So we built all that for you inside the portal. We've vetted out, you know, hundreds of vendors, whittling it down to just, you know, that 20 or so vendors that you can start rolling out to your cut solutions to your customers right away. Um, most of these vendors you're going to go directly with, but the vendors have been vetted out. You're going to have all the monthly recurring revenue services. You can build on top of your uh, managed services, and we're building them all the time. We have a lot of R&D going into that. We have peer-to-peer -peer discussion forums, and this is actually one of Kelly's ideas is for us to build this forum, but peers like to talk to each other. We had a MSP um, in Atlanta who actually went to a conference this week for state and local government and he said all they talked about was NIST and how NIST is becoming the big um, framework everybody's going to use for state and local government. So if you have a state and local government client, you know, you want to talk about the NIST and again, he'll bring that to the whole forum. So peers are going to learn from each other. And then we have a whole area of workspaces. There's 75 plus workspaces that works kind of as a library. So you have a library of information that you can access and your whole staff can access. And then we also have provided a lot of discounts with a lot of these vendors that we'll be able to pass along to you to save you additional money um, along the way. So everybody starts with the course foundation. Everybody starts with the foundation courses. So it starts with the security and risk. It goes to the compliance, vertical markets. Then we go through the assess, address, and maintain. So you and your whole staff want to start with the foundation training. And that's where I would start. Then we have three tracks. We have business, technical, and sales, because we know once everybody does the foundation training, the techs want to focus on the track, the um, technical, the, um, the sales, and CI, VCIOs want to focus on the sales, and then the owner wants to focus more on the business. So the investment for the portal is $6,000 annually, and that's for the whole company up to 15 logins, or it could be $550 a month. So this is, you know, we're trying to keep the price down. This is a huge, huge value to be able to get your company up to speed. If you follow our process, I guarantee you'll make at least 10, you know, 100 or even 1,000 times your return on investment once you get on a roll because you're going to provide this for all your customers over time. So everybody kind of says to me, what's the next step? So how do I really get into this? So the first thing I would do is I would sign up for the membership portal online. I would do the foundation training. Then I would go and say, okay, let's focus on three clients that are either existing clients or new clients that you can approach with security compliance. We're going to hold your hand all the way through the first three or 23, whatever it takes to get you comfortable. We're going to develop a strategy for those three clients. And then we're going to build a risk assessment proposal for that client. And then we're going to present that risk assessment. I can tell you that 
99 times out of 100, if it's presented right, they will buy that risk assessment, which will trigger everything else. Now, some MSPs you work with are kind of small, and they say, I'm too busy to do it. We have a team here that can do the risk assessments for you in the beginning and or long term. A lot of times, MSPs will start with us and do the risk assessments for a while, and they wean off doing more and more of their own. So we have a team here that can help you do that. We also have MSPs that follow the training, and they're totally self-sufficient, right? So we have a MSP that I taught the process to in New Hampshire, and he already has a three-month backlog of risk assessments, and he hired two people. Most MSPs are learning how to do this with their existing staff, but over time, if it takes off really quick, you know, some you may elect to have an ad staff over time. So again, if you just want to dip your toe in or you want to go in full speed, we can help you both ways. The time to do this is now. I mean, we've been involved in this product and service over four years, and we saw it emerging. But now we're right in the thick of it, and the time to now is really to seize the opportunity. So I want to thank everybody today for attending this um, webinar. I hope you found it very, very informative. And if you are ready to sign up, just go to our website, www.choicecybersecurity.com and fill out either yearly or monthly and sign up for the webinar, excuse me, for the portal. And we'll onboard you, we'll contact you to onboard you within the next couple of days. If you want to see a demo of the portal, you know, you just want to see it, you're not really comfortable, you want to do a one-on-one -on -one demo, we'll do a one-on-one -on -one demo for you. Just shoot us an email at info at choicecybersecurity.com. If you want us to do a search on a dark web search, like I said, where you have other questions that you want us to answer, also send it to info at choicecybersecurity.com. So I want to thank everybody again. I hope you really enjoyed it. I want to turn it back over to Kelly for uh, he has some additional information to share. Thank you very much, Steve. That was awesome. We do have a couple of questions just as I take back control of the of the slides. Um, lots of questions around the dark web scanner and whether that is something that uh, is available to people and, and how it works and what you would suggest. Yeah. Okay, so you're right, the, the dark web scanner is red hot. So when I first started doing the dark web searches, it's actually um, a company out of the UK that actually does a lot of these scans. And we were doing them for clients and realizing how we found all this stolen data. So I went back to the company and said, look, we need a service, a self-service solution for MSPs. So we now have a self-service portal. And I'll give you a number. It's $150 a month. And you can do as many domain searches as you want to get kind of information and get that initial baseline of, of the actual thefts or, or the breaches, then you can also set up in the self-service portal a monthly recurring revenue by client if they want the real-time alerting. And your cost is about $100 per domain per month. You can charge whatever you want. So if you want that set up, I can set it up for you and give you a 30-day trial and see if you like that service. But I can tell you that it's really an eye-opener. Perfect. Thank you very much. So I'm going to talk a little bit about whose Solar Winds is. For those of you that are customers, you may have seen this. Those that aren't, uh, just to give you some information about us. We are the largest community of MSPs in the world, over 20,000 of us, 400,000 different networks, 5 million endpoints, and a million mailboxes. So we are the largest MSP solution provider in the world. And how that helps you is that allows you to drive community and talk to your peers through events like this, through our conferences, and through some of our online tools. So um, joining SolarWinds is more than just technology. We have two flavors of remote monitoring and management, both a cloud solution and an on-premise solution. So regardless of what your needs are as a managed service provider, we can help you build your managed services business with our remote monitoring and management tools. Our remote monitoring and management tools are called MSP RMM and MSP N Central. They do not only do the traditional MSP RMM functions, but also have a bunch of other tools integrated into them. Things like our uh, hybrid backup solution, antivirus, our patching solutions ticketing, web protection, and mail protection. So all great tools that you can just add to your service stack by just enabling within the, the different platforms. 
most of those tools are also available as standalone. So whether you're using another RMM or something like that, we do have standalone ticketing system. Uh, our backup system can be uh, taken on its own, as well as our remote control tool, our mail security tool, and our data security tool. And that's risk intelligence, the one that Steve was talking about in doing scans. I know there are some questions into what Solomon's product does that, so that's called risk intelligence. I'm sure, so for anybody who is interested, we'll certainly uh, hook you up with uh, an expert in that to show you how that works. But the really interesting thing about our association with SolarWinds corporate is it also gives us the enterprise level IT solutions that they offer. So a whole host of enterprise level solutions that you can present to your customers, certainly if you're working with larger customers that have their own IT staff, we can help you uh, deliver solutions to them as well. Now, as I said, we're more than just technology as well. So we have some of the leading MSP programs out there to help you become MSPs. One of the, one of the uh, things we do is, is webinars like this, but we also have industry leading business support. So a proven business process to help you grow reoccurring revenue. And you have access to that uh, through our online tools, either our community portal or our uh, and central resource center and that will give you access to a whole bunch of information on how to sell, how to market, how to uh, define your services. We also have a whole bunch of resources that you can just rebrand. So things like our digital binder which are marketing resources that you can just put your logo on and go out and start marketing to your customers and that includes marketing material, email, blasts as well as presentations you can give your customers. And we also have a whole host of people there to help you from the technology side. So technical support, unlimited product training, uh, the MSP community so you can share information between yourselves, uh, and then unlimited technical support. So these are all things designed to help you succeed as a managed service provider. And of course, we offer free trials of all of those things. So if you go to solarwindsmsp.com on the train now, you can select the, the software that you're looking for a trial of, whether it's MSP Remote Monitoring Management, MSP in Central, Backup, our ticketing system, our spam filtering solution, our risk intelligence, or MSP Anywhere. So um, definitely lots of tools there that can help you as a managed service provider. And finally, a plug for the upcoming Hero Series webinars. Uh, this is just a reminder that uh, on May 23rd at 11 o'clock, we're going to have a panel of MSPs talking to them about how they're using security in the MSP practice. And uh, we will have somebody who's actually a member of Steve's portal on that. So we'll be able to ask them questions about how they utilize that resource to help kickstart them into this, into this game. And on June 27th, we're going to talk about the different layers that uh, Steve was talking about uh, more from a, you know, how do you implement it into your client's environment and those kinds of things. So two great webinars coming up that uh, I hope you'll join us. We will be sending out uh, to everybody who registered a recording of this webinar, and so you will receive that in the next few days. And as well on there, there will be a link to sign up for the other webinars. I also put a link to the webinars uh, sign-up sheets in the chat, so if you uh, haven't seen that, you can uh, go to the chat window within go to webinar, and that link should be there. So hopefully you can find all that stuff. And so uh, right on the top of the hour here, so uh, thank you for, for spending your time with us. I hope you found it valuable. I think Steve did a great job of, of talking about security and why it's a very important piece of uh, the future for managed service providers and some of the tools that he's uh, developed to help us uh, all of the community take advantage of that opportunity. And so we look forward to talking to you next month or if you need uh, anything in terms of help with your existing technologies, uh, looking to augment your technology, some of the solar wind MSP stuff, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to connect you with somebody to, uh, to make that happen. So uh, thank you again and have a great day. Thank you.